Welcome back. It's time to see how to measure the GDP under the income approach. We'll consider the revenue side, the income flows in the economy now. Here is how we calculate it. GDP, as per the income approach, equals national income plus capital consumption allowance plus a statistical discrepancy. To understand this equation, we need to look more closely at each of its components. First, we have to define what the national income is. In essence, it is the value of all goods and services produced in a country during a financial year. National income is given by the sum of wages and benefits paid to employees, corporate and government profits before taxes, interest income, unincorporated business net income, rental income, and indirect business taxes, less subsidies. Good. Let's now discuss each of the components of the national income equation. First, employees' compensation consists of wages and benefits, which are mainly payments for pensions and health insurance. Second, corporate profits on a pre-tax basis. These may be distributed as dividends to households, kept in retained earnings, or paid as corporate taxes. Next, we have interest income. This is the interest that businesses pay to households to compensate them for the loans of financial assets. Unincorporated business owners, net income and rent, are the earnings that go to sole proprietors and partnership companies. Lastly, we need to add indirect business taxes, such as sales taxes, fuel taxes, or import duties, and subtract subsidies. Subsidies are included in the final prices of goods and services, and that's why we need to exclude them from the total income here. Excellent. All these payments form the total amount of the national income in a country. Now, let us go back to the GDP equation, which states that GDP is equal to national income plus capital consumption allowance plus a statistical discrepancy. The component we must define next is the capital consumption allowance. It is a depreciation measure of the physical assets used up during the years of operation. The capital consumption allowance is the output that goes to replace the capital stock as it wears out. It is regarded as what needs to be reinvested in the production process to keep up the current level of productivity. Usually, there is a difference in GDP when measured with the expenditure approach and with the income approach, although theoretically results are supposed to be the same. Each of the methods uses a lot of information gathered from different resources. That's why matching exactly the GDP results obtained under the two approaches is almost impossible. For this reason, when using the income approach, a statistical discrepancy is added to the equation to adjust for any differences. Great. We have discussed how the GDP, or aggregate output, and the national, or aggregate, income relate. After all this, it is time to introduce a measure that is a little bit more specific. Let's quickly talk about personal income. Personal income is all the income received by households in a given country. It is important to know that this is the total amount of revenue received by individuals, not the government or the business in a country. It equals national income plus transfer payments minus indirect business taxes minus corporate income taxes minus undistributed corporate profits. Please pay attention that the transfer payments are included with a positive sign. Why, you might ask? That's not an error. We need to use the plus sign here. Personal income includes the transfer payments paid by the government, such as social insurance payments, unemployment benefits, and disability payments. Let's denote these with F. They are not considered as national income and not included in the national income figure, though. That's why we need to add them here. Good. What's next? When we calculate the personal income, we also need to deduct from the national income all taxes or profits that go to the business or the government. Why? Clearly, because these don't go to individuals and therefore are not considered personal income. In addition, we deduct the undistributed corporate profits. These are the retained earning accumulated by firms. We may even call them savings generated by businesses, or SB, as these funds are not reinvested in the production process. We are almost done. But let us ask ourselves, why do we need to know the personal income? The main reason is to be able to calculate personal disposable income, or PDI in short. This is the last economic indicator we will discuss in this video. 
It is calculated as personal income excluding personal taxes. Personal disposable income represents the household's money left for spending after income taxes. It is a key economic indicator. The after-tax income of the whole population shows the true potential of the economy in a given country. The more personal disposable income consumers have at hand, the more they spend on goods and services. Hence, the higher the GDP measured as per the income approach. To wrap it all up, we may present the personal disposable income as GDP plus transfer payments minus retained earnings or savings generated by businesses, SB, minus direct and indirect taxes. If F is the transfer payments paid by the government, R is the sum of direct and indirect taxes received. We may derive the amount of net taxes, T, as R minus F. So, the personal disposable income equals the total economic output, or GDP minus savings generated by the business, SB minus total net taxes received by the government, T. Let's look at the components of personal disposable income now and see how it is distributed. People either spend it on goods and services or save it for future consumption. So, we may say that it equals consumption C plus savings generated by households, or SH. Substituting for personal disposable income, we get the following equation. Let's rearrange a little bit and group together the savings generated by businesses and households as total savings, or S. Therefore, we get that the GDP, or the aggregate income in the economy, is the sum of total consumption, total savings, and net taxes. This is another way to present GDP when applying the income approach. So, let's sum it all up. In this video, you learned how to calculate a few very important macroeconomic measures. GDP as per the income approach. Please keep the two formulas in mind. National income, personal income, as well as personal disposable income. Let us know if you have questions or any doubts about these. Well done. Let's take a short break and continue from where we've left off in our next lesson.